635 light years away, in the constellation Cygnus, drifts a planet bathed in silence. It orbits a star like our sun. It receives just enough light. Its average temperature might be close to Earth's. Some call it the first true candidate for Earth 2.0. Its name is Kepler 22b. But what do we really know about this world? Does it have land, or is it covered by an endless ocean? Does it spin like Earth, or is one side forever trapped in daylight, and the other lost in darkness? Could life exist here? Or is this planet an illusion, a beautiful, deadly trap? In this video, we explore the mystery of Kepler 22b. From the way it was discovered, to what scientists believe lies on its surface, to how alien life might adapt, and whether a human could ever survive. Because this is no ordinary exoplanet. This is a place where physics bends, biology transforms, and nothing is quite what it seems. So what makes Kepler 22 be both so promising and so dangerous? Let's begin. Kepler 22b was discovered in December 2011 by NASA's Kepler Space Telescope. It was the first planet ever confirmed to orbit within the habitable zone of a sun-like star. A zone where, in theory, liquid water could exist. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. The star it orbits, Kepler 22, is slightly cooler and smaller than our sun and Kepler-22b orbits it once every 290 days. At first glance, it feels almost familiar, like a cousin of Earth hidden across the galaxy. But look closer, and the differences begin to grow. Kepler-22b is about 2.4 times the size of Earth. That's enough to classify it as a super-Earth. But we still don't know whether it's rocky, watery, or cloaked in gas. Its mass, and still unknown, could change everything. A rocky super-Earth might have a solid surface, but a mini-Neptune would be wrapped in thick clouds and crushing pressure. And then there's gravity. If Kepler-22b is as massive as scientists estimate, its gravity could be several times stronger than Earth's. And that raises an important question. If this planet looks so much like Earth, why might it be so difficult, or deadly, to walk upon? One reason might be how this planet spins, or doesn't. Many scientists believe Kepler-22b could be tidally locked, forever showing one face to its star, while the other remains in endless night. That would divide the planet into two extremes. On the bright side, constant solar radiation, non-stop evaporation, dense clouds, and a runaway greenhouse effect. A place where oceans boil and storms may never stop. On the dark side, freezing temperatures, no sunlight, and a sky that never changes. But in between, there's a sliver of hope. Along the narrow line between day and night lies the Terminator Zone, a permanent twilight where temperatures might be mild enough for liquid water. If life exists here, this fragile ring of dusk may be its last refuge, a narrow corridor where light meets shadow, and the laws of habitability are rewritten. But could a world this divided ever host life at all? If life does exist on Kepler-22b, it would be nothing like what we know on Earth. On the sunlit side, creatures would have to survive unfiltered radiation, heat, and constant cloud cover. Photosynthesis, if it exists, might look completely different. Organisms could evolve translucent skin, or surfaces that reflect or bend light. 
filtering the intensity to avoid damage. Or perhaps they wouldn't rely on light at all. They might not even rely on oxygen or carbon. Some forms of life could evolve to use sulfur, methane, or even exotic elements like silicon as their base. Life, after all, may not mirror Earth, but reflect what's possible when the universe writes its own rules. On the dark side of the planet, any living system would have to survive in total darkness. But there is precedent. In Earth's deep oceans, miles below the surface, entire ecosystems exist around hydrothermal vents. These creatures use chemosynthesis, extracting energy not from sunlight, but from chemical reactions. Life on Kepler-22b's dark side could work the same way, clinging to heat sources deep below the ocean floor. And in such a high-gravity world, bodies would need to adapt. Not tall or upright like ours, but low, dense, and muscular. Creatures might crawl instead of walk. They might have armored shells to withstand pressure, multiple limbs to maintain balance, and specialized sensors instead of eyes, detecting vibration, magnetism, or trace chemicals in water. Some might even glow. Bioluminescence, uh, like deep sea jellyfish on Earth, could help attract prey, communicate, or simply light the way. But in a world so alien, could intelligence arise? Could something aware survive in the twilight? Let's say, against all odds, like we one day reach Kepler 22b. A ship descends into the clouds, breaks through the atmosphere, and approaches the surface. What would we find waiting? The first challenge is gravity. If Kepler 22b is a rocky world, its gravity could be up to six times stronger than Earth's. That means every step would feel like lifting your entire body uphill, with weights tied to your limbs. Muscles would tire rapidly. Bones would weaken. Even standing could become unbearable. And that's just outside the ship. The second danger, the atmosphere. We still don't know what it's made of, if it's thick and toxic like Venus. The pressure at sea level could crush an unprotected human in seconds. If it's too thin, we wouldn't be able to breathe. And our blood could boil. Any suit designed for the planet would need to be part spacesuit, part submarine, and then there's the water. Kepler 22b may be covered in a global ocean, but that doesn't mean it's safe. The chemistry could be alien, acidic, metallic, or even filled with compounds that destroy organic life on contact. And remember, all of this is happening on a planet more massive than Earth. Launching off the surface again might not even be possible. So the real question becomes, could humans survive Kepler 22b? Or would we never leave at all? We often think that if something looks familiar, it must be safe. A planet with sunlight, a comfortable orbit, a year almost the same length as Earth's. On paper, Kepler 22b feels reassuring, but familiarity can be deceptive. Because beyond the numbers and data, this is a world shaped by forces we've never experienced. Its gravity would crush us. Its atmosphere might poison us. Its ocean could erase us. What we see may not be what is. Kepler 22b reminds us, not everything Earth-like is truly like Earth. We've seen this before. Mars looked dry, but manageable. Until we measured its air and found it unbreathable. Venus looked bright and cloud-covered. Until probes were crushed within seconds of landing. Kepler 22b might just be another reminder that appearances in the cosmos are often lies dressed as hope. In fact, perhaps this planet isn't an opportunity. Perhaps it's a warning.
that in the vastness of space some worlds may only appear friendly until we get close and some doors once opened can never be closed again. So what should we make of a place like Kepler 22b? A second Earth or a mirror held up to our deepest assumptions? Out there in the vast dark ocean of the cosmos drifts a planet that looks almost like home. It has light, it has warmth, it may even have water, but it also has silence, pressure, darkness deeper than anything we've ever known. We once dreamed of finding a second Earth, but maybe. The lesson of Kepler 22b is this, that the universe is full of Earth-like planets that are nothing like Earth at all, and that life, in all its fragile beauty, may not survive where the numbers say it should, but only where the conditions allow it to become something new. So if we ever reach this distant world, if we stand on the edge of its oceans beneath its foreign sky, would we still call it a second Earth? Or just a reminder of how rare our first one truly is? If this journey sparks something in you, subscribe and stay with us because the universe is only just beginning to reveal its stories.